like bike packing weather out here. I am out here in Hot Springs, Montana with my buddy Isaac and we're gonna attempt to do some very cold weather riding. Got 35 miles to do today to our overnight stop. Right from the get-go there's a problem. Usually this place is supposed to be less snowy and it's actually more snowy than where we live so it seems like a bad idea but we'll see. I don't know what we're doing out here. Uh, <laughs> the best snow we've had in a while in Montana. <laughs> and, and for some reason we're not backcountry skiing, we're, we're cycling. And, uh, we're cycling. Yeah, my toes are gonna hurt, my fingers are gonna hurt. Everything's gonna hurt. But there is hot springs along the trail somewhere. On a scale of one to 10, I wish you could do it. Nine? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not good myself. Time for not wearing the right shit. My legs are cold. We hit this with all the lava. I think we're good. So we're here now, and we're attempting to get up the ridge. Pretty much, we go stay on this thing, left, up, 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 up into the deep snow, push our bikes to the top of Irvine Hill. Your final destination. Which is? Hot Springs. Is there a hot spring there? You said there's hot springs there. I don't know. Are they? Oh. Can you give me a situation update? We've lost all the cars that were on this road. So now we're down to one car track. It's more slippery and we're going up there. Looks like nobody's been there, so not ideal. <laughs> Are we lost? Slightly. <laughs> so we've missed a turn and now we're on the other road. I still didn't see the other road. Oh shit! Oh. <laughs> Oh, down. We've been going for 12 miles. We started all like fun and games and then the last two miles have been pretty shitty. Snow's deeper. We came for a gravel ride. You know, in a fall, fall day, you wouldn't have that much snow. Little did we know, this was all a pretty silly idea. <laughs> Isaac just went off the road. There. That was not the line. <laughs> yeah, that was not the line. That was really cool. We're just talking and then at some point he's just off the road. Nothing you can do. Woo. Yes. He's over, he's made it. today then after a couple hours of riding my water is completely frozen it sucks well well it 
5.30 p.m. and our little alpine detour has put us 10 miles away from our destination or six miles from where we started. Yes, it's been very successful. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we've proven one thing is that you can definitely ride in snow, but should you? That's the question. Let's go find some hot springs. Home sweet home. Let's give you a tour, tour of the pad. This is the room you go through to the bathroom. Bathroom without shower. And let's go into the kitchen. Well, there's no light in the kitchen. Ah, oh, there it is. Full kitchen here. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's quaint. Coffee bar and a full stove here. So last night we arrived after dark at this rustic hot springs resort. We found out that the star rating of our hotel might not have been counted in decades. I mean, it felt like we traveled internationally. Everyone in there, in the pools, was from, I think, Serbia? And Isaac and I totally felt like foreigners in the middle of nowhere, Montana. It was surreal. We're pretty stoked. We packed our bikes and pedaled on. Place this morning, man, it was brilliant. It felt like a we were traveling far away somewhere. Wow, I know it's this is the best one. It's amazing. Yeah, view of the mountains, hot water tap, cold water tap. So you just get fully open this one and you're good to go. It's like a bathtub. 120. Natural bathtub though. Uh. That's it. This is the end of day two. This concludes our little hot springs loop. It's gravel biking in the winter. Turns out it's much better when you have hot springs. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Back to the studio. So you've seen Isaac and I do our bikepacking adventure. Things didn't work out as planned, as usual. The weather really wasn't what it was supposed to be. That actually takes me to this part of the video, which is the gear I use for bikepacking. Let's start with the principles, the basics, the bike. This is the BMC URS LT. It's the gravel exploration bike from BMC. Weighs about nine kilos as a large frame, roughly 18 pounds, 19 pounds, which is pretty light. It's all carbon. When it comes to gravel bikes, all I want is comfort and lightness, as light as I can, you know, without sacrificing comfort. You know, I'm between a medium and a large, but I went for a large because it's just more comfortable. There's just more room to, you know, to lean on the bars, to put more stuff inside the frame. It's just more convenient. Highlights of the BMC. It has two little suspension bits, one here in the fork, actually, that gives you some suspension. Back here as well is a little rubber component that gives you also a little bit of extra squish when you're going down some rough trails. And I have gone on some mountain biking trails with this fully loaded and it's we made it out okay. So it works. Big birdie brakes as well. That's important thing when you go bikepacking. Uh, SRAM ETAP, which is the wireless SRAM kit, which is wonderful. I highly recommend it. And also another consideration for this bike was it's got a really low gear for hills. You know, you try a bike, you're like, oh, this is good. I can go, you know, up any steep hill. And then you start loading it up and you realize that, you know, super easy gear you had is not so easy anymore with 20 pounds of gear on the bike. That's about it for the URS LT. Now let's get into the components. The seat now, um, it's a 3D printed physique seat. I think it's called the Antares versus Evo Adaptive. It's all fancy stuff to say that it's really thought through and design. I've got about 700 miles of this seat and it's been wonderful. It's actually the best seat I've ever had. There's just no pressure points or numbness on it. So this is my go-to seat. For the pedals, I went with the Crank Brothers uh, Candy. Kind of light. It's not the lightest in the game, but it's bikepacking. It doesn't matter, you know, so much. Uh, I like them because they're easy to get in and out. Easier than the SPD, like the Shimano ones. Also a bit of a wider base, which gives me more perch, you know, when you get a push on these uphills. The bars, 
They're stock for 40 millimeters. I'd say you, the rule of thumb is to match the shoulder width to your bar width. It's actually nicer to have wider bars for comfort and also because you can have a bigger uh, handlebar bag and put more stuff on the cockpit. So when in doubt, just go a little bigger. Bar wrap. This one has uh, the stock one, which is 1.8 millimeters. If the bike has a bit of suspension, I go 1.8, two millimeters is enough. If the bike has no suspension, or I'm gonna go on some really rough roads. My other bike there, the Bear Claw, is double padded, which equals to about 3.6 millimeters, so there's two wraps on it. And I've just seen also that uh, Lizard Skins, which is a wrapping company, has some 4.6 millimeter wraps. That's it for the bike. Shoes. These are the Physics Climbers. They are waterproof. They have this nice little boa thingy. Close them tight. They have this nice gator as well that I appreciate. They're really good at keeping my food dry and warm. I don't wear them in the summer because they get a bit clammy, but all shoulder season, these are great, man. Nice sole too here, which is good if you want to go take some photos or just explore out of the, the trail for a bit. Just feels like you're wearing normal hiking boots. Highly recommend these. Helmets. Uh, this one is my favorite I've ever had so far. It's from Oakley, super light, breathes well. It has MIPS, which I recommend. You know, it tends to protect your brain if you fall. A nice little bow at the back too. I mean, I just want the helmet to breathe well and attach and adjust easily. You know, it's just a helmet. I don't want it to think about it. And this one does that. Going down the equipment line, riding bibs. So for summer, um, I rock the uh, Asos ones. The reason why I rock the Asos is because they have a lot of cush. I've tried several brands, including the Pearl Izumis. I've landed on the Swiss made Asos. These have a few years of use already and they're still almost as cushy. And for fall riding and even winter riding, uh, this company called Gorewear, which are the makers of Gore-Tex, the pad is integrated already, pretty cushy, not as good as the Asos. Uh, they're also Gore-Tex uh, windstopper and fleece lined, which makes them kind of perfect. If it's gonna be really cold, I throw an extra pair of uh, shell pants that I'll show you later. Onto gloves now. These are from Puck. They're one of the cheaper ones, in the $45 range. What I look for a glove in the summer is really minimal padding, because that's what the bar wrap is for for me. And uh, a lot of breathability, you know, and even on the big uphills, I'll take the gloves off. But these breathe a lot on the top of the hand, and the palm is also breathable. So I've been loving these. For spring, fall, I ride with these, also from Gore. Also the same material as the bibs, the Gore-Tex uh, Windstopper. They have minimal padding as well and some really cushy insulation. Been loving these as well. And on the trip we just did, I actually brought a pair of very thick mitts like these for the sections when you hit the highway and you're going faster, it's cold. These are lifesavers, always bring them with me. These are from uh, Hestra. I like them because they're just not too bulky. They don't have like a full leathery bit over them, which makes them practical and light. Boot covers essential to cycling. Uh, these are from uh, Gorewear as well. So Gore-Tex, I've never had these soak through in the last two years. Actually, Chris Burkhardt got me into these. I appreciate him for that. Just a little Velcro behind and then you're good to go. Um, I use them for the cold. I actually wore them in the video you just watched and I also use them when it rains a lot. When it rains that much that you shouldn't be cycling, these I put on my shoes. Moving on to bike packing bags. This is the name of the game when you're doing this. Let's start with my favorite, the Mighty Tailfin. So this is really clever. They make a bunch of saddle bags that essentially you cinch your saddle, but they all have lateral sway because they only have two points of connection. This is clever because it has three. So you replace your axle and your rear tire, and this clips to the new axle you have, the Tailfin axle, right here, boom, boom. This is secure on the bike, and this attaches to your saddle, and this doesn't swiggle around, just super sturdy. So also made out of carbon, amazingly light. I have high regards for this product. Use it to ride across France. I mean, it's really good. So pretty huge capacity. Look at, you could fit in here, a coffee machine almost. All waterproof. I mean, this is just like a dry bag. You cinch it, close it and you're good to go. So this is the tail fin. I wouldn't go bike packing without it. Another favorite from Oveja Negra. Top tube bag, um, I like it because it's very roomy. I've had some from Revelate in the past that weren't as big. This one is big, man, I mean, in comparison to my phone, it's just throw it in there and there's so much room for. You can have bars in there. This is the XL, it comes in different colors. I just went for the camo, because why not? Another favorite from Oveja Negra as well. These are feed bags. You put these on your handlebar, 
And I usually stick bottles there if I'm using a frame bag, because then the bottle cages are gone with the frame bag. Shoulder season, I stick cameras, food, pack a shell in there. Also use it to carry my tool here. A little nifty Crank Brothers tool. Also good to carry bear spray in here if you live in the mountains. Yeah, really good these. Now this one's tricky. There's a bajillion handlebar bags, you know, the ones that go under your handlebar like this. Uh, essentially, they're all glorified dry bags with like two straps to go around them. I don't have it here, but it's, it's just harness that goes over here. Usually put my sleeping bag in here, a downy, all the stuff that takes room, but you don't really need until the end of the day. Frame bag, this is another one from Oveja Negra. Uh, it's the small one. Good to leave room for bottle cages with this one. When it comes to frame bags, I always try to get the biggest one I can fit on my bike because with bikepacking, you always need more room. It comes down to that. Uh, this one's good. Made out of Dyneema, waterproof zippers. This one's been solid. Oveja Negra. Now onto the very juicy topic of layering for riding. I'm of the belief that the gear I have should be able to do multiple sports because I travel a lot. I don't wanna have to have bags for each thing. I spent a few years perfecting my system and I've actually have a kit that is for gravel riding, mountain biking, hiking, trail running, ski touring. It's all the same layering system. This is the minimal approach to layering. For summer, I rock the 66 North Adalvik shirt. It is polyester, highly breathable in the back, which is good, and uh, long sleeve, which is good for the sun, and whether I'm riding, running, this is my go-to. For the summer, highly recommend it. Second guy, this is for uh, winter. So whether I'm cycling in the winter or ski touring, I was actually using this yesterday for ski touring. This is called the Bowsar from 66 as well. The important thing about it is that it's merino and it has a hood, two things I need so I don't have to carry a beanie with me. See, minimalism there. If you get hot, you sweat. Polyester is never gonna keep you as warm as merino will when you're wet. That's the advantage of wool. Still warm when you're wet. and also dries up much faster and it doesn't stink. So love the Bowser from 66. Department of Shells. This is 66 North Carsness. Possibly the best shell I've ever had. Obviously it's a windbreaker, it's not waterproof. But man, you can see for how dirty this thing is for all the miles we've done together. I kid you not, I probably have over a thousand miles of travel in this shell, whether it's biking or running, and it's brilliant. Even in the summer, I take it with me on the bike because it packs down to nothing, just a little ball. And it's always nice for the downhill when it's gonna get colder or just a light little shower comes out. Again, it's not specifically made for biking. It does everything, and that's what I love about it. When it's more serious weather, I rock the 66 North Snaffle. This one is a Gore-Tex Infinium, which is a bit thicker. It's a little, you know, heavier. So I only bring this if it's gonna be really cold, like we did in the trip with Isaac, or if it's gonna rain. This is a sturdy piece as well that I use for skiing, mountain biking, and cycling as well. Now, this being a video about gear and bikepacking, I thought it was important to tackle the stuff you wear when you're not on the bike. This is the 66 North Oak. I'll bring this only if I'm going to spend the night, you know, with the bike. Yeah, just a nice little down jacket, packable. It has this fleece lining here on the side to make it more breathable. And just some light down in the front. Just perfect for the summer. This beast here is the 66 Odi. Obviously very buffy and comfortable. I've actually cycled through France last year and I took the same version of this jacket in black. You know, when you stop at night, definitely need to layer up. So again, another jacket that does pretty much everything. Hiking, I'll take it. Ski touring, I was using this yesterday again. Awesome piece of kit. Pants that I wear over the bibs. 66, I think it's called the Stromness. Good for hiking as well, if it's gonna be windy or wet. Uh, I was wearing these on, the, on this video over the bibs, just for extra wind protection. This is Gore-Tex Infinium, which means it's good against the wind. And when things get really desperate, you bring these uh, 66, Kalier pants, which are so light. It's like holding a piece of paper pretty much. This is called Gore-Tex Light, and it's maybe the world's best kept secret. Maybe after Area 51. They're awesome because they're super light and very waterproof. These pants come with me when it's gonna rain. Gore-Tex Light. Another important bit with cycling is sunglasses and glasses in general. When it's sunny, I rock these, the Vjorne Trek. I like it because they have this little piece of recycled wetsuit, by the way. Ride, stop, take a photo. I don't have to fuss with my glasses. They are a bit intense in styling, which I actually like. 
uh, but they're not for everybody for sure. Nice wind coverage, good visibility. They do make the same ones in white for when things get desperate and it's gonna be gray or night. Well, if you are in a lab scientist ones, which are just fully transparent, good wind coverage and super light. Um, I'll link the model below too. Onto accessories, two things I use is first off this very watch actually, Sunto Peak 9 GPS. I use it to record activities and make nice little itineraries on Strava of them. I'll link that below too. Then I use the Wahoo Element Roam. This is really handy to put on your handlebar when you build an itinerary. I use this with Komoot or right with GPS, which are websites you use to create your itinerary based off cycling roads or cycling itineraries. And um, then you can have turn by turn navigation. So when I did the ride across France, I built the entire route, downloaded it into this and good to go. It's easy. There's no stopping at every intersection to check the map out. Now, being a photographer, I can't make this video without talking about camera carrying. Bit of a shameless plug, but this is my top loader. It's the Stroll Moment. Fits an R5 and a 1535 or 2470. Snug, but it fits it. So this is what I bring on my bike, actually. I use a combination of this plate here, which is a Peak Design plate, and the Peak Design camera clip. Essentially what I do is that I wrap this around onto the handlebar bag I'm using. The PD clip is attached to the bag, just like on this photo, and I just cinch it down with the volley strap. The PD clip keeps the camera in place. I sometimes ride all day without even closing the bag, just because it's so steady as a setup. I'm going just for a day ride, and I wanna mainly shoot photos. Another shameless plug, I bring my backpack, which is the Stroll X Moment. It comes with a camera compartment here that fits the R5 and a 1535 and a 7200. Snug. And I'll just ride with this on my shoulders if I'm gonna go get photos and not backpack. And this concludes the gear video. I hope that you've enjoyed it and you found it useful. The best part of having good gear, you don't have to think about it. You know, you just go on a ride like we just did and everything just works, right? It takes a while to build the flow and the right system, but starting with quality stuff, I remember seeing this quote from somebody saying that when you buy something cheap, you feel the best when you've bought it. But when you buy something expensive, you feel the worst when you've bought it. But after that, you feel the best, obviously. So whenever I do one of these purchases, it definitely feels hard because they're some of these things are really expensive. But I know that in the long term, I'll be pleased with it. Yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, all that. More videos to come.